So David, how did you get involved in the Maker Fair? How did you get started in this whole thing? Yeah, it's a good question. So a couple of years ago, I was just like you. I had never been to Maker Fair. I'd heard about it from a few people. Um, and I just decided that it was something I wanted to check out. So I went to the, the May of 2010 was my first Maker Fair. And I was totally blown away. I couldn't believe some of the things, you know, everything that we just saw in that video. Um, but, but more importantly, I was really impressed with all the people because everyone who was working on their, their different projects were so excited and so passionate and so eager to kind of tell and share and, and help me understand it um, that, I, that I knew I wanted to get involved. Now, you've been working on homemade submarines. In fact, we have a model of one right here. This is actually full size, if the camera can get a shot of this uh, on the desk. Uh, this doesn't have all the electronics in it. It's basically the shell, but were you working on that before you started at the Maker Fair, or was this inspired by the Maker Fair? It was definitely inspired by the Maker Fair. So prior to that experience, that first experience, I had no making experience. I mean, I didn't have shop class in my high school. I didn't really spend that much time tinkering. But after that experience, I knew I wanted to get involved. And so I started hanging around different meetups and, and following around some of these makers who I had met and eventually got introduced to Eric Stackpole, who is my uh, uh, friend and, and partner in Open ROV. And we had this amazing conversation about underwater robots and that we wish we had a tool like this. And so that was about a year ago, and um, that initial conversation uh, has turned into this, um, this open ROV project. Now, do you have all the equipment at home to make this, or do you go someplace and work together with a group uh, to put it together? Exactly. So we've um, done all of our prototyping at TechShop. So what open ROV is, is it's an open source underwater robot. Um, and what that means is you can go essentially to a, a lake or a, uh, an ocean or a stream and drop this in and then plug it into your computer and see what it sees. Um, there's no way we would have been able to do this uh, if it was just Eric and I in our garage. We just don't have the tools. So we went to Tech Shop and, and fabricated the and, entire... And Tech Shop is a place where it provides a lot of tools and you pay a fee to be able to work there? Yeah, exactly. It's like a fitness club, um, except they have all these making tools, right? So they have traditional making tools like um, they have a full wood shop and a full metal shop and, and welding, but they also have a lot of the new rapid prototyping technologies like uh, 3D printers, laser cutters, water jets, and things like that. So it's, it's a fantastic place for, for beginning makers, but also really experienced makers. Now, did you have to know anything about this type of device when you started? I mean, did, did you have any background or uh, professional expertise? You know, I did not. Um, Eric had, had some. He worked for NASA. Um, but I had nothing. So I, this whole process has been a learning experience. And that's something that I found out about the, the maker community is that it's okay to be a beginner. And that if you have a dream and you have an idea and you have a project you want to work on, uh, it's very much a, a situation of just-in-time learning. So you kind of learn the different skills as you need them. We actually have a video which shows a little more detail about the device. Is that video ready to go? Um, if so, let's roll it. Hi, I'm David Lang. And I'm Eric Stackpole. We're here to tell you about OpenROV. OpenROV is an open source remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, that can be controlled from the surface while relaying live video and other data to the operator as it flies. It weighs two and a half kilograms and is about the size of a shoebox. That's small enough to test in your bathtub, yet large enough to add payloads like cameras and sensors. The intention of the project is to create an ROV that is low cost and easy enough for anyone to build, but that is still capable of doing relevant scientific research and exploration. OpenROV is propelled by three off-the-shelf brushless motors, two in the back which allow it to move forward and aft as well as turn, and one vertical thruster which allows the neutrally buoyant ROV to change depth. Two battery packs on the bottom of the ROV provide it with around an hour and a half of runtime, as well as counterweight the thrusters and act as ballast. Between the battery packs is a payload bay, where up to four threaded rods spaced 50 millimeters apart can be inserted to accept a wide variety of payloads. Electronics for the ROV are contained in a single acrylic tube. Inside this tube, an onboard computer hosts live video from a webcam and sends commands to an Arduino microcontroller that interfaces with the motor controllers and other hardware on board. Because bulky tethers can significantly impede the agility of an ROV, we've developed a way to communicate 10 base T Ethernet data over a single twisted pair of wire using an off-the-shelf part. The entire interface for the ROV is hosted from the robot itself, so instead of installing software, you just plug the tether into your Ethernet port, log on to the ROV's IP address through Chrome or Firefox, and fly. OpenROV is completely open source and open hardware meaning we've published all the design, schematics, and code on the website, and invite co-developers to help make it better. 
It's definitely a maker product at this point, but we think that by being an open hardware project and developing this with a community, that we can create an open source ROV that's capable of serious scientific research. We've come a long way, and we still have a long ways to go. The next step is to get more of these open ROVs out into the wild, into the hands of makers and tinkerers around the world. Okay, so that was the video about the open ROV. Now, is the maker movement, is it really a movement, or would you call it a movement, or is, is it a community? How would you describe the whole thing? Well, I would say both. I mean, it's, it's definitely a community, and that's, and that's something that has, has stuck out for me as, as someone who's relatively new to this whole thing, um, has been the community that's been so welcoming. Uh, I'd say it's a movement because so many people are getting involved, and I think, I think it's, it's really easy for people to, to think that making is something that, you know, they don't know how to do or they don't know those skills or those technologies. But once you get started and once you kind of take that initial first step, I think you find that the community is very welcoming and that it's really easy to get involved. Now, you also blog about the maker movement. You blog for Make Magazine. Right. What, what's the name of your blog? So I write a column called the Zero to Maker column. So as I, as I went through this process, this kind of becoming a maker and, and diving into the community, I decided, or I talked to the make editors and said, you know, this, I'm learning a ton. I'd love to write about it. So the Zero to Maker column is really a chronicle of that journey. So all the different classes that I took and experiences that I had and everything I learned along the way. Now, there are maker affairs in many cities. It started in San Mateo, but they're having one in New York soon. They right. just had one in Detroit. Do you go around to all the maker affairs? You know, I, as many as I can. Um, so I've been to the, the two, two Bay Area maker fairs, and uh, we're getting ready to bring the open ROV to New York at the end of September for the World Maker Fair in New York. Is this your primary project? Do you plan to branch out into other projects, or is this sufficient for now, just working on this? Oh, this is, this is turning into more than a full-time job. And we have you know, thousands of people all over the world who are contributing to the design. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's becoming this amazing project and platform um, for us to collaborate with people, um, makers, tinkerers, but also scientists and educators all around the world. So this is... Now, now, this, is, now this is open source, but what does that actually mean to say that it's an open source project? Right, so we're not just selling this open ROV, we're actually developing it with our community. So we post all the designs, all the schematics online for people to download and build themselves if they want. But um, by doing that, we get incredible feedback on how to make it better. So you have a lot of people who are really interested in this because I guess underwater exploration is not for everybody. It's not something that you play with in your house. You've got to go out on a boat in the ocean. Yeah, or you things. know what? Or even a lake, right? Or, yeah. you know, what, what got us started was, it, was an underwater cave up in, up in Northern California. So, you know, up until now, there hasn't been a, a great tool for people who are just curious, right? It, you know, the uh, commercial ROV like this probably goes for somewhere on the order of $10,000, which is prohibitive to a lot of amateurs who are just have something they want to explore or are curious. And so we really wanted to break that barrier down. Now, I understand that you sell the kits. Like somebody can order a kit from you and they get all the parts and they put it together and they can modify it so maybe instead of uh, the camera that you would use maybe they'll put a different kind of sensor in it absolutely I mean I heard today from a, a group who have, are putting different types of cameras people are putting all, all sorts of sensors people want to try depth sensors um, uh, people want to put robotic arms or you know all these different ideas for for what can be added or augment the, the so it robot. sounds like you're bringing serious scientific research to the masses well, that's the goal. That's the goal. And, but we're not doing it ourselves. It's, it's a community. So any, anyone who wants to get involved with this project is, is welcome to join. Now we have another video which actually shows you taking this out on the ocean and showing what the open ROV sees from under the water. Uh, is that video ready? If so, let's go ahead and roll that tape. <laughs> 